In the region west of the inland city of Tamworth, you'll discover rivers that are part of the Murray-Darling Basin. This project is located within the Namoi catchment between Weewa in the west and Tamworth in the east. Unfortunately, rivers of the Murray-Darling Basin, which are vital water resources, have suffered over the years due to factors such as habitat loss from previous land uses. It was about uh, 2020 in, and over about a four months period that we had severe floods and um, the, the, the track went under three times um, and uh, it was just, you know, we just couldn't use the facilities but we also lost the banks. That was the worst part about it. We had um, sheer banks that were probably five or six metres um, in depth and there was no remnant riparian vegetation along the banks at all. It was migrating further and further back with each um, flow event and yeah, it was pretty degraded. The Murray-Darling Basin has over 120 bird species and more than 50 species of fish and the Namoi catchment, like many of the river systems in the Murray-Darling Basin, is in need of a helping hand to enhance biodiversity, especially in these riparian areas, floodplains and wetlands. With funding from the Australian Government and in partnership with Fisheries New South Wales, the New South Wales Local Land Service and Ausfish, Lancaster Australia has helped to improve the habitat of the natural assets of the Namoi, including bank stabilisation works, in-stream habitat structures, weed control in riparian zones, stock exclusion fencing and assisted regeneration using locally sourced native seedlings. As the project evolved, we identified a need to assist with major bank stabilisation at two locations, including the Namoi River just north of the town of Gunnedah and the Wallamore Anna Branch, which is part of the Peel River at Tamworth. So the project work involved in this particular project was uh, quite a large amount of rock revetment uh, initially. Firstly, we, we also had to um, batter the banks. The rocks were placed and then we also used uh, a fair bit of large woody debris that we had to truck in from another site to use as uh, rock and timber groins which is helping with the uh, stabilisation of the bank. Um, once all that work was done we then laid some jute mesh across the, uh, the site uh, to further stabilise the bank and then we planted straight into that jute mesh and also on the, uh, the top side of the bank as well. It's been a huge benefit for Gunnedah Jockey Club. All this area around us in the river, all the, a lot of the facilities were falling into the river. The horses stabling and day yards were overhanging the bank where it eroded away. The committee got together and we cleared that all away and then re-established the bank and the planting of the trees and it's absolutely transformed the place. The, the bank looks so much better now with, with the work that's been done on it. Um, it was um, yeah, it was it was, it was a pretty ordinary setup before. Um, now it's uh, we've got trees planted. It's all been tidied up, and um, it, it, yeah, no, it's, it's really it, this this area is really good. We undertook a geomorphology review at these locations, and based on that report, undertook a range of improvements, including rock revetment, bank reprofiling, installation of rock and timber in-stream fish habitat structures. And we also planted several thousand seedlings within the catchment to filter the surface water, help reduce erosion and enhance habitat connectivity locally. So we got a study done to look at different options as to what we could do in this system. High energy uh, comes over the weir that we saw earlier and so we only, get, we only get fast water coming through here. So it's a natural process for this river to meander but we've put it on steroids, you know, we've, we've, it's just happening so fast. What we're trying to do, we're not trying to stop it from meandering, we're just trying to slow it down. So these structures you see here are known as pin retards. They're trying to retard the flow as it comes down. And you'll see um, there are, there's actually regrowth, some tajarine is growing along. That's been done in the past and these retards tend, will assist that in regrowing. If we'd rocked it, that would have all gone. So this is a lot more passive. Success to me would be coming back in 10 or 15 years and not actually seeing these pins, that they've silted up and we've reduced the capacity of this whole area and it's sort of full of vegetation. We worked alongside broadacre farmers, not-for-profits and government agencies. 
Working in the riparian zones on broadacre farms to enhance natural assets, we assisted with ecological restoration to those areas, and in doing so, this will over time provide habitat for small birds and other beneficiaries, such as microbats, which will assist the growers to control pest species and also their reliance on pesticides for their operations. Working with Ausfish, we promoted the importance of enhancing the riparian areas within the catchment to the broader community. Our role at Ausfish um, is to protect waterways now and for the future generations of recreational fishers and to empower those fishers to take part in restoring places like this you know, to benefit our fish further in the future. So this, this project's a really cool project because this project was started around about 2015 and there's looking like there's going to be about another 10 years before we'll actually see this work that's going in now. We'll see the outcomes of what we've done today. It's a long-term process, but we've already started upstream on Gunaganu Creek, um, which we've done a couple of years ago. So we've already seen fish come back there. We've got um, silver perch, which are an endangered species. We've got threatened species catfish back in, and no doubt we have them here as well. And so building on to the success of what's happened upstream, and continuing downstream in this centre branch. Our partnership with Fisheries New South Wales and New South Wales Local Land Service resulted in the bank stabilisation of approximately two kilometres of actively eroding river frontage. There were many outcomes from the project, including habitat restoration to riparian zones, creating community awareness of the problem and ways to get involved, engaging with growers and stakeholders, creating local employment opportunities in the region, and improving biodiversity outcomes in the catchment. The project would not be possible without the Australian Government's support. We are grateful for the funding and commitment to the Healthy Rivers Program.